Welcome back everybody. I figured it's time to make a dedicated video for this topic. I have teased it at the end of uh, previous autocross videos. I have teased it on Instagram. I've teased it in the build thread on Track Mustangs Online. And I would need to make a video dedicated to it so I can have it in the background. I don't have to keep trying to hide it and make sure that no one's really seen it. So what is it? It is the front suspension for the Mustang. It is the SLA suspension that I am trying to design and build to put onto the car for uh, next season. So let's take a quick look at what I have going on. All right, what is an SLA suspension? So it is just a double wishbone suspension. So the SLA stands for short, long arm. Uh, so it's just a type of suspension. It's what most cars that are a double wishbone used nowadays. So it has a long lower arm and then a short upper arm. So that just allows a better uh, camber curve as the suspension uh, moves up and down. All right, so I mentioned earlier that I was trying to design and build my own. Uh, why am I doing that? Number one is just for the knowledge of doing it, uh, how the suspension works. So I'm a mechanical engineer, so I do have some kind of uh, training and knowledge in this. Uh, but a lot of it I'm having to learn because I'm not a suspension engineer, I'm not a design engineer. So a lot of it I am trying to learn myself. And also it has been uh, over 10 years since I graduated college and took my last uh, you know, suspension design course. I did take a couple of those type of courses in college uh, just for the fun of it. But I haven't actually used any of that knowledge since those classes over 10 years ago. And the number two and maybe three reason is cost and availability. So the cost of uh, SLA suspension is minimum probably, you know, five grand upwards of uh, 10 grand, depending on, on what kind of components you get, the type of coilovers you get, the type of uh, spindles you get, and then just the availability of them. Uh, there's only a couple companies out there that are actually making uh, double wishbone suspensions for our Mustangs. Griggs is one of them, and then Mod Squad Garage is another one. There is, I have heard of Cortex making one for the car, and then Detroit Speed is working on making one from the car. Uh, Griggs is anywhere from like five to ten thousand dollars, depending on what kind of coilovers you get, what kind of uh, spindles you get, things like that kind of add up in the cost. The Mod Squad Garage one is a more entry level one and more towards the C prepared cars because the prepared class is not able to replace their K member. So the Mod Squad guys actually use the factory K member, but then add in the upper arm and their own spindle. So their spindle is pretty cool. It's just a, a flat steel plate uh, that's cut out and then other things are uh, drilled and welded all onto there. And it's a, uh, a drop spindle, which I have, I've been trying to find a drop spindle and there's not really very many ones for the Mustang, but there is the Mod Squad Garage, there's Griggs, there's Cortex. Um, but that one is uh, actually decently priced. Uh, the Mod Squad one is, I think, three to $5,000, depending on the options that you go with, obviously. You can get some really expensive coilovers and other things like that. Uh, but the spindle and the coilovers is the biggest things that uh, pump up the price. Uh, Griggs and Cortex, I think, have an aluminum spindle, so those ones are quite expensive. I think they were, what, like $3,000 a pair, I believe, for uh, those ones. They are very nice units, and I might go to uh, one of those aluminum ones in the future. For right now, I'm going to stick with... Uh, the spindle that I'm working with. Now, what is my plan for the suspension? So this suspension is only gonna be for me. It is only gonna be for my car. I'm not trying to make anything for anybody else. I'm not making uh, a company. I'm not selling this. This is just for my purposes, my learning. So if anything goes wrong or if it's not ideal, it's only on me. I don't have to worry about any other cars or customers or anything like that. I am trying to see if I could do it in phases just to kind of help reduce the cost. Because uh, even though I am designing and building it myself, it is still very expensive. Uh, there is a lot of time that goes into the design of this. Uh, 
I don't know how many hours I have into reading, designing, modeling, all that stuff right now, it's, it's up there. Uh, so that is the one thing that you gotta remember when you're buying these kits is there was a lot of engineering that went into uh, that design. So I'm planning on doing the build in phases, hopefully. So like phase one will be using the stock K member, stock lower control arm, and just getting the upper arm kind of fitted up in there. I'm doing this to reduce like the fabrication and design aspect of things and then to help reduce the costs because I still need to buy, uh, you know, the upper A arm coilovers, the upper A arm mount, all that stuff kind of adds up and the coilovers quickly add up because I want to get some nice ones. These are ones that are going to be able to go on the car and be used in every iteration and should hopefully last on the car. If, the, they, if I get nice ones, they can also be rebuilt. So there should be like a one-time purchase and be done with it kind of thing. And then phase two uh, is probably when I'll try to get into doing my own lower control arm or and then into doing a K member and changing the geometry around. So I'm quickly learning why companies are providing like a full kit, a whole K member, lower control arm, upper AM, or all that stuff uh, is just because they can put all the, the proper geometry uh, into it and then it is good to go. Where I'm trying to kind of use the factory stuff, which is not ideal. Uh, I'm trying to use the factory stuff to make a geometry that will work and it's just it's not the best to start from uh, but there are some things that i can do to change it and i'm we might have to change it to where i'm having to build my own arms and all that stuff just to make this work uh hopefully i can make it work with the the stock lower control arms but they're pretty short uh, you really want to have longer arms and it would be nice to have the longer arms just to push everything out so then i can actually change the offset of my tire to move that in some but that could be done in different phases so what do i have going on right here at the moment so i got this upper arm on here so this is a joe's racing uh, arm. This is their seven inch one. So this is the smallest arm that they make. And I'm hoping that it is going to be short enough to where I can then build a mount up here that will kind of sandwich the frame. So that's how all, all the other companies that have ever done it have, have made the, the upper control arm mount. It just sandwiches the, the frame on the car. So it'll go in between the, the K member and the frame, and then it will have uh, mounts on the top also to kind of hold it down. And then I have the Griggs Racing uh, SN95 upper adapter in here with a, a Howl uh, ball joint. So that's how I got everything done up to allow it to have an upper A arm is with the adapter, the ball joint, and the arm. So now I'm just in the process of getting some measurements and doing some modeling, trying to figure out if I can make a mount that will be uh, able to work and then still give a uh, decent camber. So right now I think this camber is sitting at, yeah, one, one and a quarter, one and a half degrees of uh, a negative. And then the benefit of having a double wishbone suspension. So as the suspension travels up, you get more negative camber. Uh, how much is all kind of dependent on the geometry. So you really kind of want this A-arm to be facing upward a little bit. So if you had it level or facing downward, so it's as the suspension traveled up, this curve, it has to go out before it goes in. So then you're gonna be gaining positive before you're gaining negative. So you really want the arm to be uh, pointing upward some, so then you're already on the decreasing radi decreasing side of this, uh, this curve. So as the suspension travels up, you're getting more negative camber. So I'm just trying to figure out if I can use the stock lower A arm and make it work with the, the seven inch upper. As far as doing the coilover, I would then build or weld a mount that would go onto the lower one to hold the 
lower part of the coilover that would then come up and have a mount up in this area that would uh, hold the upper part of the coilover. So that part is all pretty simple. We would be getting rid of the, the spring in here, obviously, probably be cutting off the K member a little bit of where the spring is. Uh, some other things that I might try to do to, that I might have to do is moving these uh, pickup points on the K member. So that is an old trick that is in some of the old uh, Mustang books like the Matthias uh, book of moving those uh, suspension points up a little bit higher to give a better uh, roll center and things like that. So that's one of the things that the Maximum Motorsports K member does is move those suspension points up higher so that gives a better uh, roll center of the, the car. So that's one thing that I can try to do to this K member and then move on to uh, building my own or buying another one. So that's kind of where I'm at in the, the physical world. We can go to the model and kind of see what I have put together in there. Again, it's not perfect. It's all kind of based on measurements that I've taken of these components and trying to put together. It's also my first time using uh, Fusion 360. So I'm still trying to figure out some of how it works and how to do uh, to do some of the joints properly. But yeah, let's take a quick look at my model that I got going on. This is my model that I've been kind of putting together. This is all done in Fusion 360. So as I said, I'm not a design engineer. Uh, so a lot of this is not perfect, not great. Uh, I'm still kind of learning the program, but it is similar to other design programs that I have used uh, just sparingly in the past. So as you can see, I kind of have a K member suspension points kind of in here. I have a lower control arm that is modeled kind of after the stock one. I have a spindle that's kind of modeled up after the stock one. I have an adapter that's modeled up after the Griggs one, an upper A arm model after the Joe's Racing one that I bought, and then upper mount that I'm kind of working on. So the thing that I like about being able to put it all into this modeling is you can actually see what it's kind of going to look like. I'm not using this program for any doing like the suspension points or figuring out amber curves or caster or Ackerman or anything like that. I'll probably use a, a proper suspension program to do that. But this gives a good visualization of kind of like what it may look like, what kind of uh, constraints, uh, space constraints that I will have. You can actually see to see the suspension go up and down, which is really cool. Uh, one thing that I haven't quite figured out is how to get this to uh, not rotate all around like that. I think if I went in and put in like a tie rod kind of uh, component in here and a steering, then it will not actually rotate all the way around, but I haven't actually gone and done any of that yet. But it's kind of cool just seeing everything kind of move up and down. So yeah, this is my model that I am working on. Uh, it's not perfect, never will be perfect, but this is kind of what I am using to hopefully be able to build the front suspension for the Mustang. All right, thank you guys for watching. As you saw, this is still a long ways off, so there will be a lot more videos coming out uh, as I make progress on this. I just wanted to get uh, kind of an introductory video out there, so I don't have to keep hiding it in the background and just to, to let you guys know kind of what I'm working on around the shop here. So this is gonna be a big project. Uh, it's gonna be one that I'm kind of focusing to hopefully be done during the off season of this autocross. So December, January, February kind of time frame. Hopefully get everything built up, get it installed onto the, to the car to be ready for autocross season starting next March. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to be done, a lot of design left to be done. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.